how do you maintain the code quality when your developer team is growing super fast? Huh. <sighs> You're asking all the right questions. <laughs> We're glad to hear. We have a, a real big problem in our industry, which is growth. It's a problem because there are so few people with experience to teach the young people coming in. It is sometimes said that the, the number of people in our industry doubles every five years. And that's a, a very frightening statistic because it means that half the programmers in the world have less than five years experience. If you're a manager, one of the things you've got to worry about is getting the experience of the older people into the brains of the younger people. And the best way to do that is to start having the older people pair program with the younger people. By pair programming, I mean the older guy and the younger guy are sitting together at the same terminal, the same keyboard. They are writing code together. If you have five experienced people and 20 inexperienced people, take those five and have them work with the other 20 an hour a day each. Get those junior people sitting with an older guy for an hour a day. The older guys can take on their own tasks. That's fine. But they should also help the younger guys with their tasks and get those younger people in contact with the older people at the keyboard, making real decisions, looking at code, understanding why those decisions are being made on a daily basis for at least an hour a day, maybe two if you can afford it. Is there anything else that we haven't covered and you think is important to mention here? One of the things that our industry lacks right now is the focus for professionalism. We are not professionals. And we are not professionals because there is nothing that we profess. A professional professes. And the word profess means to teach or to preach, or to, to say. There's nothing that we have. We have no ethics. There's no standard of ethics in our, in our industry. There's no set of disciplines that we all adhere to. A doctor is a professional because a doctor has a set of disciplines that they profess. They have an oath, a set of ethics that they profess. And they will tell you what that oath is. They will tell you what the disciplines are. They will teach you those things. We don't have that. Although perhaps just now we are beginning to accumulate those disciplines and those ethics. This is what our industry dramatically needs and needs soon because our industry has been put in a position that very few have ever been put in before. Our society depends on software for its existence. A current society could not exist without software. This was not true 30 years ago, but it is true today. And all you need to do to prove that to yourself is look around the room you're in and count the number of processors on the walls, on the floor, in your pocket, on your desk. Count the amount of processors right now running code written by 22-year-olds at 3 in the morning. Count all that and then count the activities of daily life that involve software. You cannot drive a car. You cannot microwave popcorn. You can't make a phone call. You can't watch TV. You can't wash the dishes. You can't wash the clothes. You can't buy anything. You can't sell anything. You can't get an, an insurance claim filed. You can't buy an insurance policy. You can barely sleep. You can't tell what time it is because you've got a computer in your watch. There is nothing in daily life that we do that is not somehow controlled by software. We programmers are sitting in the middle of everything that happens in our society, and we are screwing it up really big. We're in the position now where we can kill people and have. And... We're going to have to deal with that pretty soon.
So how do you propose that the industry goes on about having a set of ethics? Well, we're talking about it now. You and I are talking about it. Many other people are talking about it. What is that ethics? What is the ethics that we need to say? What should programmers do? The programmers who cheated the Volkswagen in California, who wrote the code that determined they were on a testing rig and changed the parameters of the engine to avoid the pollution standards, what should happen to those programmers? Now, I'll tell you what happened to them. They went to jail. <laughs> And that's that's not a bad outcome. They should have gone to jail. They wrote code that cheated. And, you know, you can say that well, it, it was the bosses that made them do it. No, no boss can make you do anything. A boss can tell you to do something. You always have the ability to say no. And those programmers should have said no. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to write code that cheats. I'm not going to write code that lies. I'm not going to write code that puts people at risk. I'm not going to do that. That's part of the discussion we need to have. At some point, and I don't know when and I don't know how, at some point we need to organize, sort of like the doctors did in, say, the 1800s. And the doctors looked around and they saw so many people claiming to be doctors that did not have the knowledge, did not have the discipline, did not have the experience. And they organized around that and they created a licensing organization for being doctors. And I don't know how that's going to happen in software. Something like that is going to have to happen and probably within the next two decades. All right. So we still have some time before the world ends. I hope, I hope we do. <laughs> <laughs> Want to hear more? Click the link in the post and listen to the full episode of the Level Up Engineering Podcast. Brought to you by Coding Sands.